Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to do the peak. It's back. We're going to Target, and then we're gonna come home, and I'm gonna show you step by step how I added in this subtle pink through my roots. I'm gonna have a little chat. So, grab some popcorn, grab a bevy, and let's go. You know, I know you're making up the truth. Why can't Okay, we're heading back to pink. We are gonna do the pink, and I wanna show you how I do it, what I get, everything that I need is at Target, which, how convenient is it that I'm here literally twice a week, at least. <laughs> um, I also wanna show you some of my favorites at Target, so let's go shopping. I'm just not good at showing sympathy. Give me a break. I'm not angry anymore, just a little bit let down. I'm not angry anymore. Okay, I love these razors. I went away from them for a minute, but now I'm back because it's just so easy with the soap, so you don't even have to use like shaving cream. I just use the soap on it. Pink. I've got all the supplies. Let's go pink. I don't do all of it pink. I like to primarily do like the roots and down a little bit. So they were out of my favorite product, my favorite brand, but we're going to try this new one. It's got great reviews. So we'll see how it goes. I think it's pretty much the same kind of thing where you like it's always best to do it on lighter hair, right? We've got the the real blonde, my real blonde bleach blonde hair. And this says, shampoo and dry your hair, protect your hands with rubber gloves and hairline to prevent staining. Here is my thought process and what I normally do. I like my hair to be dirty. So this is like day four hair. And I put this in dry and dirty because I don't want to dry it again. And then, um, kind of does what it wants. Like it's always an adventure to see what happens. But I'm gonna show you my routine and we're gonna chitty chat. Hi John, see my little bubba? He's a cutie. So I got my old stained Tupperware dish because I'm classy like that. And this is the hot pink colorista. I'm gonna put that in a corner. This is the instant color in pastel pink that in the other corner. Ooh, look at that pink. <gasps> this is going to be fun. I'm freaking excited. And then I've got my Miracle Hair Mask by Bondi that I put in the ends. So over on Instagram, which is where I started my page, I do a, like what's called this? I call it a Segzy, S-E-G-G-S-Y Sunday, where I share questions and polls that my followers, my friends, my audience, like sometimes they're topics that I talked about to a friend over the week, throughout the week. Sometimes they're topics of what we've talked about in DMs, but it's been so fascinating, so interesting. I absolutely love getting to know my, my followers, right? Like my, I, I hate calling them followers because it's friends. Like we're all friends now, I mean, I feel so close to so many of these women that follow me and the fact that they will trust in me to ask these questions that maybe they would feel uncomfy asking or talking about to someone. But for me to be able to put it on my page and we can kind of have like an open dialect conversation, it's been so interesting. So the reason why I'm talking about this is I want to give you kind of a backstory on why I love the whole topic. But also we're going to do this. I'm going to try multitask. Can I do it? I'm going to put uh, the mask at the ends because I'm not really gonna do any color at the ends. And then I'm gonna go in with the hot pink first. And I'm gonna put the hot pink at my roots, right there. So I've always been fascinated for as long as I can remember about like human sexuality, right? Now I was raised in a very religious household in Utah, you can guess which religion it was. Um, and things were taught growing up that like, I feel like I just kind of listened to and I just blindly, okay, that, that is what it is, right? That's like, that's, it's Bible for lack of a better word. So I, when I met my husband and we were dating, I was 18 or had just turned 19. And then we got married when I was 19. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. 
I also have an undercut. And I don't do anything with the undercut. We're gonna go down with this guy. And um, what I was taught growing up was that you don't have relations before you're married. And especially with women, which I don't know if men were really taught the same thing, if boys were, but I remember a lesson that was if you are active before you're married, you're like, I used a piece of gum. And nobody's gonna wanna chew a used a piece of gum. If it's already been chewed, it's already been, the flavor's already gone. Nobody's gonna want that. So not only was it fear based, there were so many things that were fear of shame, fear of being denied, fear of not being accepted. And so I think a lot of the things that I did or didn't do were because of that, which now as a mother to a little girl, that breaks my heart. Like I do not ever, ever want her to feel that shame, to be scared, to be told that she could be a already chewed piece of gum. That to me is so infuriating thinking about it now. And I understand, I've changed my views quite a bit. I do understand and agree it's special in my opinion which it's not for everyone and again that amount of respect knowing that it is your body you can make that decision you can make that decision not based on if an entire congregation an entire religion is going to shun you which i'm dramatic i know but i just feel like i want my daughter to be able to make that decision for her and herself and not for anyone else so my husband and I, we messed around, TMI, we're all friends here. We messed around before we were married and I was kind of like, well, we messed around, like I'm gonna use a piece of gum. Like we have to get married. We have to get married. Nobody else is gonna want me. Nobody else is going to marry me when I've already been chewed. Funny. Anyway. I mean, we were both, we were 19. We shouldn't have gotten married. I mean, I'm glad we did now. Like in hindsight, almost 19 years later, it's a good thing we got married. I'm glad we got married. I'm glad what happened happened. But also we got married for a dumb reason. We got married because I was worried no one else would want me. I was worried that I was going to be damned. And so I thought that was my only choice. That was my only option was to marry this guy at 19. Yo, if my daughter tried to marry a guy at 19, I mean, there's not much I could do or say, except for lock her in a bedroom, but just, yeah. So anyway, so as I've gotten older, I mean, I'm almost 37 now. No, I am 37. I'm turning 38 this year. I'm turning 38 this year. Turning 38 this year, I feel like I have really become so much more open-minded. I have become so much more open, so much like in such a healthy spot when it comes to sexuality. And I feel like there are sadly so many women and so many girls and so many people even that still feel so much shame for maybe what they do with someone else, for what they do behind closed doors, for what they think, what they watch. That for me, if, like I don't want anyone to do that. I want, like human sexuality is so natural. It's so natural, it's so healthy. And if you're in a healthy relationship with someone, you should be able to express that love. You should be able to feel like you can be and do what you wanna do as a grown ass woman grown ass man, it shouldn't be up to anyone else. It shouldn't be up to any religion. It shouldn't be up to, I don't know, soapbox. So right now I'm just doing like the hot, hot pink in the roots. You excited? I'm excited. Oh boy. Part again. Okay. 
So I think one of the things that has opened up my my sexual awakening, which I'm pretty sure it's a combination of things, right? My age, those pre-menopause hormones, that fun stuff, but also I love, like I love smutty books. Smutty, romance, filthy books. And I feel like it seriously just opened up my mind and my hormones. Like, if you are questioning reading a good smutty romance book to spice up your love life, to spice up your sex life with your husband, to spice up your sex life with your significant other, 1000% do it. It has improved, I just made a mess. It has improved. I mean, honestly, we already had a great sex life. Our sex life has been like any couple, it comes and goes, right? Like you go through phases where maybe I'm not wanting it as much, he's not wanting it as much. But overall, we've had a good sex life. But me reading these smutty books, and I don't read them, I read them. I listen to them. I always, always have Audible, my AirPod in, if I'm doing laundry, if I'm driving, if I'm doing a chore, I have got a smutty book playing. Yes, I am not a professional hairstylist. Surprise! <laughs> Did you know? I bet you couldn't even tell because I'm just doing this so professionally. Okay, um, these books, and I have heard them called like, isn't it, it's basically porn. And it might be like a form of it, but I don't see the harm in it. And once again, who are we to judge? We should not be judging others. I mean, don't judge me, and I won't judge you. These smutty books are, like some of these authors are so good at what they write where you feel like you are just in the story. You feel like you are in the thick of it. I have got a few favorites, like my top favorite narrators that are just so good at letting you feel like you really are watching a show to the point where when I'm not listening to the book, I'm thinking about these characters. I'm thinking about this plot. I'm thinking about what's going to happen. And I get so invested. I look forward to listening to my books. Um, I do a, I have a Goodreads, which totally, if you have a Goodreads, get on there. Let's be friends. You don't have to fill out a question to be my friend. That, that is so weird to me. Like, book snob. I mean, I'm not judging. That sounded like I was being judgy and maybe a little bit, but also like there was this gal that I wanted to follow on Goodreads. I found like her content on like her recommendations on TikTok. And I was like, Oh, I like that book. I like that book. I bet she's read like kind of the same type of books that I have. Like, yes, let's do it. I go on, go to add her as a friend on Goodreads and it makes you fill out a question. I think one of the questions was, what is your favorite like book you've read this year? And if she doesn't like your answer, you're not friends. If maybe the book that you loved this year, she gave like one or two stars, she didn't finish it. You can't be your friend on Goodreads. Is that not insane? Is that as weird as I'm thinking it is? Because I feel like who cares if you don't love the same books? I don't understand it. I don't get it. And I mean, I've always had that mindset where more friends is having more friends, having more people and making more connections is a good thing. But I guess not everybody has that same train of thought. So we're not friends. <laughs> I answered the question wrong. Um, I guess she didn't like the book that I said was my favorite. Rude. It's okay. Her loss. How's this look? That part? I feel like I'm kind of being sloppier than I usually am with this because I'm multitasking. And remember how I pretend to be a good multitasker, but I'm just not. Like I think women are supposed to be good multitaskers just like naturally. But obviously, I'm not. Um, 
something else that I like to share on my Instagram, like during that series, we talk about like, there's been a couple of conversations about like tips and tricks, which that sounds kind of questionable, I get it. But tips and tricks meaning like, okay, if someone asked, for example, like, Luke, do you have like favorite lube options or toys in the bedroom? Like one particular gal um, was talking about how her significant other feels like toys in the bedroom are a threat. And I can totally see how it could be perceived that way. I can totally see how maybe someone who is a little bit insecure or doesn't understand that toys can be, it's not just for solo play. I mean, bring it into your bedroom, bring it into your intimacy, into your intimate time, and it can be fun for both of you. There's not like a rule book for intimacy. There's not a rule book for what you can and can't do in your bedroom. Do what feels right, respect each other, and have fun. We all want the same thing, right? We all want to finish. We all want that big, the big boom, the big O. Oh. I also have a favorite Amazon toy that I have literally saying my praises because this guy is under 20 and it's rocked my world for years now. I was contacted by a brand as a content creator, influencer. I get contacted for collaborations to create the content for their product. Um, but I'm very passionate about not just taking any collabs. Like I want to make sure, I don't just want a paycheck. I, my followers, my friends trust me. My mom follows my account and I don't want her buying something that I don't really like or endorse. So anyway, so this brand sent me their toy. I tried everything. I tried everything. I tried it. I had my husband see if he could figure it out on me and it just wasn't doing anything. Now, mind you, this toy was almost $200. So I turned them down and said, no, because there's something on Amazon that is under 20 and it doesn't take a scientist to figure out. It works fabulously. Don't take my word for it. I mean, it's amazing and it's $20. So even though they wanted to pay me a chunk of money, I wasn't gonna do it. I wasn't gonna take it. I wasn't going to promote something that I don't use, don't love myself. Cause I know so many, you know, it's just not my jam. Okay. I feel like I've done a pretty good job of covering my roots with this week. Now I'm gonna go in with the hair mask. I did it backwards. Like I used to take it strand by strand and apply the mask as I did it. But once again, I'm distracted. And also I don't do this. I'm not a professional, I already said that, but there's not really rhyme or reason. I've kind of just been doing this for a couple of months now. And this is what works best for me. Um, it's just fun to mix it up and I've got the blonde hair, so why not, right? So I'm adding that through. And now I'm gonna go through and add some of this What's this, the hot pink? Nope, that was the hot pink. This is called the pastel pink, but this looks like, like look at that pink. That looks like freaking fluorescent. Um, and with this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of pull it through the roots with a comb. So I'm going to clean this so there's just not as much on there. And then take this guy. This does not look like pastel pink but I'm gonna kind of go over that that I just did. Again, sloppily. I bet my hair girl wants to kill me sometimes. Like, why do I do this to my hair? And then I'm just kind of combing it down a little bit so it's not like a flat line. And I'm gonna take, trust the process. Have I made you nervous yet? I feel like we should be nervous. I'm not nervous. So now I'm gonna take this chunk. 
I have to run to my son's school today to take his permission slip to the school that he keeps forgetting. It says to turn in by the 9th. It's the end of March and he was supposed to turn it in at the beginning, which I go through my kids' backpacks every day. I go through them and it looks like, the permission slip looks like it was crumpled up, put in a pocket, thrown away, dug back out. <laughs> I don't know where it's been, but obviously it wasn't in his backpack or I would have seen it. And the filter was tomorrow. So I need to take it today. So I'm gonna do this, rinse it out, and then style it. And my sisters are gonna come over for lunch. I have got two sisters. I've got a younger sister and an older sister, and we could not be more different, all of us. Um, but they are legit, like my best friends. I love them. We talk almost every day, whether it's like polo or texting, just to kind of check in. My older sister is a junior high school teacher, so she's got some awesome stories. And my younger sister just finished her nursing degree, so she's doing that. And her daughter, my little niece, is one of my favorite people. One of my favorite humans. She is a spitfire and will not do anything she doesn't want to do. And she doesn't do So they're gonna come over for lunch today, which I'm super excited about. All right, we're heading to the kids' bathroom to wash this out. So this purple shampoo is legit so strong. So I will just put this on my roots to kind of make them extra bright. And that light doesn't stand. And then not even leave it on for long. I'm just gonna kind of run it through it. I'm not angry anymore, just a little bit let down. Just a little bit let down. I'm not angry anymore. We had some technical difficulties, but it's all washed, conditioned, and now we're ready to dry and style. Whenever I do my hair, I style it and dry it down the middle, but I do not leave a part down the middle. Today, we're gonna try something new. So, if you know me at all, you know that I freaking love my Revlon volumizer. It's a one-step volumizer and dryer. Um, I've used it and loved it and shared it for years, but another brand sent me a similar brush and I think with the discount is actually a better deal too. So this is the Bondi, what? Bondi brush. This is the Bondi Boost blowout brush. We're gonna do it together for the first time. And I'm kind of picky, not kind of, I'm very picky. I tried the new Revlon brush, like there's a 2.0 and I didn't love it as much like I went back to the original. So this guy looks similar. It's got the different heat settings, power settings, as well as a fan. So. Let's go. All right, first impression. It doesn't get as hot as the Revlon, which is a good thing because the Revlon has a high setting and a low setting, which I do with a low setting, and it still gets warm. It still gets hot. This guy, I feel like, is not as hot. It seems quieter. See, I'm not 100% sold yet. See, I'm so skeptical about this because I am so in love. I've been so in love with my Revlon guy. I grabbed Old Faithful over here because I want to do like a sound test to see how much quieter it is. I do feel like it is taking longer because it's not as hot. So it's probably better for my hair, but time, I love the time. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to do the top layer with this guy. We're going to do a sound test and then just kind of see the difference together forever. I'm 
I was wrong. I think this guy's quieter. I think I'm gonna stick with this guy. My ride or die, Revlon wins again. The color is a 10. I love the way that turned out. It's subtle. You were worried. You were nervous for a minute with how dark some of those roots were, huh? I like it, I love it. I've already done another video showing how I style my hair, but I wanna finish up our little chitty chat while I finish styling it. So tell me your thoughts. Do you agree with me on like the whole shame-free, judgment-free, it's nobody's business, or do you disagree? Do you see a reason behind it? And what do you think about my sexy Sunday? I would freaking love it. If you came over to Instagram, give me a follow over there and then wanting to chitty chat on Sunday or should we do more like content like that on YouTube? Talking through it? What do you think? If you'd be game, put in the comments what kind of like questions or topics we should discuss. I'm so open, like I love the whole point of my Sunday, my sexy Sunday was for like a safe place where we could all go judgment free, just kind of have like an open dialogue, an open talk. It's anonymous. Nobody knows the questions you're submitting. And then just kind of see like they're questions that maybe you wouldn't be comfortable talking about in person with your girlfriends. Maybe you wouldn't be comfortable talking about it with your partner. But my page is a safe place and you can come participate or you can come just watch and consume. Again, it's a safe place. You can make this YouTube. I mean, we are just starting this YouTube page. I can make it whatever I want, you want it to be. Which, how awesome is that? Like, that's one of my favorite things about social media is that you really can share basically whatever you want to share. You get on, and if there's something you're passionate about, if there's something that you want to share with other people, you've got access wherever you are from your home, from your car, from the gym. Who goes to the gym? So let me know in the comments. Here's your assignments. I am going to use my son's Axe Flexible Paste today just to try it out. See if I like it much. I like just some sort of pomade, something sticky-ish for the front part, my swoop part, and then just kind of like messing it through, getting a texture. So your assignments, hit that subscribe button, <laughs> follow for more random ask conversations, topics. And number two, leave me a comment with what you want to see more of on this page and your thoughts on the sexy Sunday content. I've got some great feedback over on my Instagram. So if it's something that like I bring over to YouTube, I'd love to just like sit and chat over coffee, over a Utah soda that so many people were just not impressed with. And I'm going in with the beach club, texturizing spray, focusing on the roots, spreading it through. It smells so good. That's the hair. That's the pink, subtle hair. I'm gonna link all the products I used in the description below. Hit that subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.